Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a crazy neighbor shoots me for celebrating my birthday party with a barbecue. She claims that barbecues are illegal. Please also check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Google, Amazon, Spotify and others to get early access to new videos and exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. And the first one starts like this. Everyone likes to celebrate their birthdays, especially the big milestone ones like 30, 40, 50 sometimes, but always 60. So when it came time to celebrate my 40th, I wanted to do something big. Get all the family and friends around. I kept my husband very busy with organizing everything. I wanted to have a pool party at home where I could enjoy an intimate barbecue celebrating my inevitable fall into a midlife crisis. I never really liked going out, so hosting a huge party at the park or venue was really not my sort of thing. I'm much more comfortable at home. There was one problem though, and that problem was Karen, aka our neighbor. Karen had a problem with the whole neighborhood and the whole neighborhood had a problem with Karen. I had heard that she had moved over to the Philippines from China when she was small and has held a grudge ever since. She does not try to hide it either, making everyone well aware that she was better than all of us just because she was Chinese. She went out of her way to be a burden on everyone that she met, so living next to her or even just a few doors away was a nightmare. I was not so badly affected as I like to stay home a lot, I work from home, spent my free time bathing in the pool, so I never really had much of a run-in with Karen. Not unless she poked her head over the garden fence to remind me that the grass on my front garden was getting a bit long or that I should not be leaving out overflowing bins and attract wild dogs or scavengers. She can get very bitter about the bins though. A neighbor across the road from us once left out bins that barely peeked over the lids. She chewed out his ear for hours, the whole road could hear her go off at him about it. God forbid your bike or car made too much noise and don't get me started with the kids playing ball out in the road. We were in a cul-de-sac and the road barely saw a car even on weekends. Leading up to my birthday, Karen made it very clear that she was going on a vegan diet. No one took her seriously though. She would always adopt whatever craze was sweeping through if she thought she could use it to make herself feel more superior to us. She had practically bullied everyone in the street to get solar rooftops, only a few actually did though. Then there was the fiasco with hypoallergenic gardens because she had suddenly developed an allergic reaction to the flowers some of us grew in the garden. What's worse, she even tried to get the government to recognize her efforts in making the green spaces more friendlier to those who have negative reactions to pollen. She was a prude of the first degree and not someone you would want to hang around with for too long. When she announced to the world that she was now vegan and was gonna make it everyone else's business to be mindful of that, my husband stupidly and proudly announced that he and me were going on a carnivore diet meat only. It was the latest craze sweeping Hollywood. Karen's face went bright red and I just went back in the house, leaving my husband out front to face the full force of Karen's rage alone and he deserved it. So the party was getting close, maybe a few days away, I'm out in the garden trimming the flowers and stuff when Karen's head pops up over the fence. Hey OP, I hear you're having a barbecue, she says to me and I tell her that it is my 40th coming up and I just wanted a nice intimate gathering with friends and family and then she goes off on how she is vegan and she finds it very offensive that I would be eating meat near her. Which I laugh at and tell her to go out somewhere for the day or stay locked up in her house. I dive into the kitchen and shut the door, leaving her to shout at my back door. The next day she comes knocking on my door with a letter in her hand. She shoves it in my face and tells me that she has a government writ declaring barbecues to be banned in the area due to risk of causing fires. At first I was shocked and rather upset, but as I told my husband he assured me that it's got to be some sort of trick and there was no way the government could come up with something like that so fast. So we looked it up and sure enough Karen had forged some sort of letter to get us to cancel our barbecue. Feeling a little better about things, the party went ahead as planned. The day came and so did most of the guests. We got into the full swing of things, drinks were passed around, stories were told and the children were causing a mess. 
it was shaping up to be a pretty successful day, that was until the very second that the barbecue was lit and the first bit of meat was put down. Karen must have had some sort of super sense or something, because when the fat hissed off the hot coals, she was out and ready to fire all barrels. The noise she screeched at the top of her lungs is hard to describe, but it was almost like someone was strangling a walrus while scratching nails down a chalkboard. Everyone stopped what they were doing and looked over to see Karen's head bobbing over the fence shouting about how she was a vegan and that our barbecue was banned. My brother not so politely tells Karen where to stick it, to which me and my husband and some of the neighbors hold our breath for the wrath about to befall my younger brother, but nothing comes. Karen goes so red I thought she was gonna burst like a balloon and storms back off into the house. I tell my brother that he had a very narrow escape, to which he replies in his usual sarcastic manner and pushes me in the pool. I will never forget the image I saw when I resurfaced. Karen leaning over the fence with a gun pointed at my brother. I shout at him to watch out, my husband is diving for Karen, everyone is looking around in shock and then it goes off. Luckily my brother wasn't hit and my husband slogs Karen so hard in the jaw that her head snaps around and she disappears back behind the fence. I was so shaken that I could barely drag myself out of the pool and before I can hug my brother, he tells me I am bleeding. My brother had not gotten shot, but I did. Once again, Lady Luck is on my side as she only grazed my hand, but it was enough to make me feel giddy. The police and paramedics came around about an hour later, took statements from everyone and bandaged my hand. It was barely a scratch. They did not leave until way past dark, with Karen being dragged off in handcuffs. It took a while to get through the proceedings, mostly because we were pressing every charge that we could to the fullest extent that we could. In the end, she got 15 years and a hefty fine for what she did. As I said before, people like to celebrate their birthdays, especially the milestone ones, and for me, I will definitely always remember my 40th, especially since the road is a lot quieter now. And here, ripe stars, I really hope for OP that this Karen is not coming back anytime soon, aka getting parole or something early, and even if she does, I hope she doesn't live there anymore. Anyway, if you enjoyed the story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment because that would help me tremendously. The next one is a story from r slash am I the a-hole. And it starts like this. My daughter Jessica, 22 female, dropped the bombshell that she was gonna be an atheist and didn't wish to attend church services anymore unless necessary. Weddings, funerals, etc. included. As her mother, I was initially shocked and rather hurt because I raised her as a Catholic, but we had lengthy discussions and worked through the adjustment together. Since then, Jessica has been happy with the new arrangements, as am I. After finishing a quarter of summer school and with more free time on her hands, Jessica decided decided to drive up to visit her grandparents and planned to stay there for the rest of the summer before the school year started again. But not even one week into her stay, Jessica drove home upset. She told me that when her grandparents were prepping for church as they always do every Saturday, Jessica mentioned that she was now an atheist and didn't want to attend church anymore and would wait for them to get home before resuming activities together. But her grandmother blew up upon hearing the news and started saying hurtful comments like how Jessica would be punished by him and how she was being manipulated by evil spirits to say the least. The two apparently quarreled for a good half hour or so before Jessica decided to leave. According to my daughter, she tried to have a thoughtful conversation, but said her grandmother was too stubborn and unwilling to listen despite grandfather's attempts to calm the situation. She still forced Jessica to go to church and that was when Jessica decided to leave. After tending to Jessica's needs, I called my mother up and she told me that I was a terrible parent for raising a soulless child. I argued back saying that Jessica is an adult and was entitled to her own beliefs and lack thereof as we were. I questioned my my mom if she loved her grandchild any less now that she didn't believe in the same higher power. My mother deflected and kept repeating that Jessica was a sinner and she would go to hell if I didn't fix her behavior. Getting nowhere and in the spur of the moment, I impulsively ended the call by saying, you know what, I would rather burn for all eternity if grandparents like you were in heaven. Now I'm very torn because I let my emotions get the better of me and may have ruined my relationship with my mother over my reckless curt response. However, I also was not willing to let her talk about my daughter this way either. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Comment number one, not the a-hole, you rightfully defended your daughter. 
Comment number two, not the a-hole, grandma is using God's name for coercion and verbal abuse. That's blasphemy, so if anyone's going to hell, it's grandma. She's not acting very Christian. I read something recently that was like, if God makes us all in his image, why do atheists exist? The answer is that atheists don't have a higher power to answer to or repercussions if they sin. Every nice thing they do is completely 100% of their own free will, generously and without any expectation of reward in heaven. So when you see atheists volunteering at soup kitchens or helping the poor, it can remind you that humans are kind. If anyone has read this recently and want to link it, I'm sure it's much more eloquent than what I put here. And the next one is a terrific Pharma HOA revenge story. The McCall family has been working this land for over a century now. My great-grandfather bought this parcel back in 1915 and it stayed in our family ever since. I grew up here playing in the red dirt while Pop Pop tinkered away on the old farm all tractor he bought new in 48. The tractor was like part of the family, Pop Pop taught me everything about maintaining and repairing it. We had spent whole Saturdays covered in grease and oil, fixing belts, tightening valves, making sure it would keep running another season. I cherish those memories now that Pop Pop is gone, that old farm all represents our family's legacy on this farm. Life here has always been about hard work and self-reliance. Up before dawn to feed the animals and plow the fields. Long days under the hot sun, hands calloused and sore, then fixing fences or working on equipment after supper. Not an easy life, but an honest one. Of course, things have gotten more modern. Irrigation systems, bigger harvesters, barn fans to keep the animals cool. But our values remain the same, passed down from one generation to the next. Respect for the land, pride in a hard day's work and caring for our animals. So when that fancy Willow Creek Estates housing development sprang up last year on the edge of our property, I didn't pay it much mind. Just a bunch of high dollar houses packed together, no space between them. Not my cup of tea, but to each their own. Then those homeowner association folks started causing trouble. It began with a series of strongly worded letters informing me about an HOA meeting. Said they wanted to discuss my unsightly debris, lowering property values in Willow Creek. I had no clue what they were on about until someone explained this HOA felt my scrap trucks and tractors were an eyesore. Now, I don't take kindly to people telling me what to do on my own land, those old trucks and tractors hold sentimental value, not to mention provide spare parts I cannot find anymore. My wife came up with the nickname Junk Cars and it stuck. But I see treasure where others just see rusty junk. So when the HOA sent their uppity letters demanding I remove the junk cars from view, I told them plainly where they could stick their orders. Last I check, my farm sat a good half mile from their perfect little development. That's when the HOA folks went and got themselves some hotshot lawyer. Next thing I know, I'm being sued for violating HOA by laws. Can you believe it? Sued by a neighborhood association I'm not even a part of. Well, that tore it, it was go time. If these HOA interlopers wanted a fight, they were gonna get one. My wife begged me to just let it go, but I couldn't stand aside while these bullies tried to dictate what a man does on his own property. I hired my own lawyer to fight them toe to toe, meanwhile I made a point to work on those old trucks right in plain view of their cul-de-sac whenever I could. I'd be out there getting my hands oily, reviving old Betsy's engine as their shiny beamers and benzes drove past with scowls on their faces. My own quiet way of showing them they cannot intimidate me into compliance. By the grace of God, we caught a lucky break. Turns out that the HOA had no legal right to include my land within their jurisdiction. Once my lawyer exposed that fact, their frivolous lawsuit was dismissed almost immediately. But if I thought that would be the end of it, I surely was mistaken. Those HOA folks don't like losing and they decided to play dirty. It started slowly at first, fences torn down along the border, signs vandalized and then I started finding my livestock spooked without cause. It's like someone had been messing with them at night. I chalked it up to coyotes at first but began to have my suspicions. Those suspicions were confirmed one morning when I found my prized cow Bessie limping around the south pasture with a nasty leg wound. Something had startled her badly and she had injured her leg trying to escape from whatever it was. Seeing my sweet Bessie hurt and frightened like that made my blood boil. Someone did this to her intentionally, I knew in 
my bones it was those HOA cowards trying to get back at me. Well, they messed with the wrong man's livelihood. Come after my home or family? Shame on you. But come after my animals and you won't know what hit you. I set up cameras and caught those yellow-bellied HOA board members trespassing and vandalizing my property under the cover of the night. I even got their arrogant faces clearly on video. These fancy pansies didn't realize I grew up hunting these woods and knew all the tricks. With evidence in hand, it was time to hit them where it hurt. Their bank accounts. I sued the HOA for damages and personal injury and my lawyer was almost giddy filing the paperwork. You could have seen those pompous fools blubbering in court denying everything even with the footage clear as day. It was just some neighborhood kids. They claimed but I had multiple incidents with the same middle-aged men. Their high-priced lawyer tried every sneaky maneuver to protect his sniveling clients but the judge was not having it. In the end the HOA got slammed with massive fines for repairs and medical bills and I got a nice restraining order to keep those jokers off my land. As they sulked away in disgrace, I gave them a little wave from the plaintiff's bench. Let him know this old farmer don't back down when you step on his toes. Ever since then, they leave me be and every time I'm working on my junk cars, I smile thinking about our victory over that crooked HOA. Around here you settle your scores fair and square according to the law. A man's home and animals deserve protecting no matter what. So let that be a warning to other HOAs who think they can bully folks and trample their rights. We country folks got roots sunk deep in the soil and we know how to stand up for what is ours. Your fancy clothes and connections don't mean squat when you've done wrong. My pop-pop and grandpa would be proud to see me defending this family farm from money-hungry scoundrels. We have worked this land for generations and with the good lord's grace it'll stay in our family for generations more. Now if you excuse me, I've got some junk cars need fixing before supper. And by the way, watching that HOA president's brand new BMW sputter past my farm every day sure does lift my spirits. Yes sir, this land has been home for over a hundred years. If I have my say, it'll still be McCall land long after those HOA leeches have moved on. You can count on that. And the next one is titled Absolutely Crazy Neighbor. Background, this took place about three years ago when I, 19 female, was living in a one bedroom apartment on campus. My building was not campus housing, but still really close to schools which average 22,000 students every year. It had a few apartments and it was designed like this. The first floor was the entrance and the apartment of entitled son number one, ES1, the second floor was my apartment, above the entrance and entitled son two, ES2, above ES1. Both sons were about 40 years old and their mother, EM, who was about 60 years old, was living with ES2. I later had confirmation by the building management that she was not supposed to live there. So this building was old, not very well soundproofed. To add to that, our two apartments on the second floor were once one apartment that was separated within a thin partition between my kitchen and EM's bedroom. Beforehand, before that day, I had received notes in my mailbox or visits from EM saying that I was too loud. She told me that my washing machine was too loud so I was careful not to do laundry before 9am or after 8pm. She told me my door was disturbing her so every time I closed it I used my key to turn the lock instead of pulling and pushing it and making noise. One day I was in my kitchen talking with a friend at 1am when we heard a knock on the wall. We had obviously woken her up so we moved the chat to my bedroom away from her to not disturb her. During the year I lived there I only had people over once, for half an hour between 8pm and 8.30pm and she was not even there for half of it. All I wanna say is, I could have been a much worse neighbor to her, I was apologizing for everything and trying to accommodate her the best I could in a crappy building. The story, I was on my way to class when EM and ES2 were going up the stairs to their apartment. My back was turned to them as I was locking my door, when suddenly EM grabs my shoulder, turns me around and shoves me against my door with the big metal handle right on my spine. EM yelling, hey, can we sleep in the morning here? Me, um, yes? EM still yelling, stop treating me like I'm stupid, stop screwing with me, I know you're doing it on purpose every morning when you walk in your kitchen, you stomp to wake me up. Me, I'm sorry, no, I'm not doing it on purpose. EM, I'm 60 years old, I'm exhausted when I come home from work because I do a manual job 60 hours a week, so I need to sleep in the morning. She was coming home at 3.30pm on a Thursday, was not up at 7.30am when I was eating breakfast in my kitchen, but still managed to work 60 hours a week. Right. 
She kept yelling at me, saying that students are only here to annoy her, until her son screamed, next noise you will see what we will do to you. I started crying and I left. The aftermath, I called my dad as soon as I got out of the building, I was speed walking as I knew they could see me from their window. My dad told me to go to the cops and file a complaint. On my way I stopped by my school where there was an event so friends of mine were in the hall and saw me in tears. One of them accompanied me to the police. I had to get a medical certificate in order to file the complaint which explained that I was so afraid of her, I was eating on my bed instead of in my kitchen and I recorded with my phone every time I was in the hallway to have proof if she ever decided to assault me again. That night I decided to not sleep there so I picked up some clothes and my laptop and a male friend went with me in case I ran into her again. I later got calls from the owner of the building and the management apologizing and telling me that it was not the first time EM had caused problems. We also received a letter saying that cameras had been installed in the hallways. In the end I did not follow up and went to court but she never bothered me again so I guess that's a win. And yeah guys I guess that little warning was enough to deter EM from causing further problems. The next one is titled, steal my car, wreck it and try to lie so I am held liable too. How about I tell the truth and you pay the whole bill. The block of flats I used to live in was being converted into Airbnb rooms by the landlord. We, me and my wife, were the last residential tenants renting there out of the 14 flats. It was unstaffed so 99% of the time the rooms were booked by in-call ladies of the night and dealers of illegal substances. For a solid week we had dealers in and out of the door up and down the adjoining stairwell every 30 minutes and one night we saw a black SUV pull up near the front of the property and try to bundle one of the women who was staying in the dealer room opposite ours, she managed to get away. We called the police as we were scared for her safety. They ended up getting a warrant as we told them of our suspicions and when tallied up with the attempted bundling, the duty sergeant was happy to bust their door in, searched a lot of them and made arrests. The other adjoining room slash flat had a couple staying in it, got a bit drunk as you do and we heard them arguing and it getting heated and at one point some sort of physical violence occurred. Police came again, told the guy to leave and not to return. However, he did come back and shouted at her threatening to stab her. A short while later we heard the most terrifying blood curdling scream and called the police again. He went around the back of the property, got in a car and sped off moments before the police turned up. The final tale was literally on my day off, hearing a knock at the flat's bottom door, either every half hour or hourly. I saw dudes with their cash waiting to come up and get their end way with a lady of the night who stayed for a few nights in the adjoining flat, the drug raid won. John would then leave, not even 5 minutes later she was on to the next one and I heard everything. Walls were horrifically thin. I hated that place but it was that or homelessness. We have now lived in our forever home, a nice bungalow in the countryside for the last year and the leaf and quiet has been a godsend. And I guess guys that is just one of the perks of living out in the countryside. If you live in a big city, especially in some kind of apartment in a huge apartment complex, you never really know what you're gonna get in terms of neighbors. And with this we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.